Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. There's even a brand new Brigadier General tier where you can get a shout out on a Commander's Quarters episode that's dedicated to you. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Quarters studio. Welcome to the show. So this day of spoiler season for Innistrad Crimson Vow has been quite the long one for myself, but quite an exciting one. Early this morning, we start off with Necro Duality, a new staple for zombie decks, and, uh, yeah. Even though I usually don't say, hey, this is a staple the second I see a card, but with this one, it definitely is. We also got a fantastic card, well, for, for very specific decks, like my one of my favorite ones, with Horrifying Dollhouse, so, yeah. If you want to see what this awesome card does, make sure you check that episode out as well. And then we also saw an incredibly broken green mythic. What else is new? On top of that, I covered a spoiler from over the weekend with Tox World the Corrosive, and yeah, this slug is absolutely disgusting. Lee Powerful. See what I did there? Because of the pause? No? Okay. But on this episode, I'm going to be talking about the brand new Precon Commanders and talking about, well, which in my opinion is better. So with all that said, let's jump into it. Now, just a quick disclaimer before we actually talk about these two commanders. Obviously, the Precon decks have not been revealed yet, the cards have not been spoiled from them, so we don't know what's actually in those Precon decks. We do know the commanders that are the heads of the Precon decks, but we don't know what's in those decks. So this episode is not which of these two Precon decks is better between the two, because I can't tell you that because I have no idea what's in them. This episode is just, which of these two commanders, when put head to head, is better. And obviously, that is completely based off of my own opinion, and you might not agree, and that's completely okay. But what I am going to be doing is talking about these commanders, what they do, what their strengths are, and what kind of cards that currently exist, or ones that I should say we currently know about, again, we don't know about the actual Precon cards, are out there that can work really well with them. So with that disclaimer out of the way, let's just talk about these two commanders really quick, then talk about cards that work well with them. First up, we've got Millicent Restless Revenant. Millicent is a 4-4 Spirit Soldier that costs 5 white blue, but she's going to cost quite a bit less than that. She has this spell, cost 1 less to cast for each spirit you control. On top of that, of course, like many spirits out there, she's got flying, and whenever she or another non-token spirit you control dies or deals common damage to a player, create a 1-1 white spirit creature token with flying. So, Millicent's actually got a lot of things going on for her. Although she does have a pretty high converted mana cost at 7 mana, you're pretty much never going to be paying that. Again, that cost reduction can really come in handy, and you can end up spending just 2 mana for this commander. Even when you count in, you know, command tax and this dying and recasting it, you very well might just be spending basically 2 mana every single time you cast this. Now, obviously, you do need a board presence to ensure that that happens, but yeah. Millicent, essentially, after the very first time that you do cast her, as long as you've got spirits in play, basically guarantees that you're going to have board presence. Because, again, for every single spirit that hits a player, you are getting spirit tokens. And again, even if an opponent rasps the board, you're going to be getting one spirit for every single one of your non-token spirits that dies. So, yeah, you're going to have plenty of mana reduction to help you recast this commander if that happens. And as I'll talk about here in a little bit, there are a ton of powerful spirits that you have access to in these colors. So, yeah, this is going to be quite a powerful commander that can pack a punch. And again, that's not even counting any spirits that might be in that precon. And yeah, I would think that there's going to be some and a couple of very powerful ones. Next up, and actually I should have mentioned this before, I'm just going in the order of actually the card numbers, which you can see in the bottom left. So yeah, this is 002, whereas the other one was 001. Regardless, Strephon Marer Progenitor. Or is it Strephon? 
I don't know. Anyways, let's go with Strafan. Strafan is a 3-2 Flying Vampire Noble for 2 Black Red. He has, at the beginning of your end step, create a blood token for each player who lost life this turn. On top of that, whenever Strafan attacks, you may sacrifice two blood tokens. If you do, you may put a vampire card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. It gains indestructible until end of turn. Now, really quick, a blood token, which is a brand new kind of token from this set, is basically this. It is a token artifact that has pay one, tap, discard a card, sacrifice this artifact, draw a card. So this is somewhat similar to a clue, but it costs less to activate, and because of that, well, you are actually rummaging instead of just drawing a card. So to draw, you are actually discarding a card. So yeah, although it's not technically card advantage, it is card selection, so it can help you get rid of dead cards in your hand for better cards. Or actually, if your strategy involves discarding cards to get some into your graveyard, you know, if you've got a graveyard strategy or reanimation strategy, it can obviously help out with that. Regardless, enough about blood tokens and more about Strafan or Straf Strafan or whatever the name is. So essentially with those blood tokens, you can end up getting three of them in a turn again if every single one of your opponents ended up losing life before your end step. And then on top of that, whenever Strafan attacks by sacrificing two of those tokens, you can put a vampire card from your hand for free onto the battlefield tapped and attacking and it gets indestructible until end of turn so it's protected in combat. So this commander can help you make a lot of artifact tokens that again can help with card selection and other things as well. And yeah, by sacrificing some of them in combat, you can get some free vampires from your hand right into play and attacking. And of course, there are plenty of powerful vampires out there, you know, throughout Magic's history, and some that even have a pretty high converted mana cost. This can save you a lot of mana on. So between these two brand new pre-con commanders, which do I think is more powerful? Well, let's talk about some cards that are actually going to make these commanders powerful and then decide. First up, again, because Millicent is 001, let's talk about that one first and talk about what cards might work well in a Millicent deck. And of course, the answer is pretty obvious. Spirits! And actually, a lot of low to the ground in evasive spirits can really help Millicent out, especially ones that, well, maybe benefit your other creatures or, you know, can help with other effects. There are actually a lot of really good spirits out there. So first up, even at one mana, we've got Mausoleum Wanderer, which is a fantastic card in a spirit tribal deck. It's a 1-1 flyer, so again, evasive, low to the ground, and yeah, a spirit. <laughs> and it says, whenever the spirit enters the battlefield under your control, Mosley Wander gets plus plus one until end of turn. On top of that, by sacrificing it, you counter target instant sorcery spell with 6 controller pays X, where X is Mosley and Wanderer's power. So there's some good utility to this, on top of the fact that it, well, can get bigger and hit harder, and yeah, you get it down really early. Next up, there's Rattle Change, which is a 2-1 Spirit with Flash and Flying for just one in a blue, and on top of that, when it enters the battlefield, target Spirit gains Hexproof until end of turn, so yeah, protect a powerful Spirit, or, you know, your Commander, which is also a powerful Spirit. It says you may cast Spirit spells as though they had Flash. So yeah, again, for just two mana, you are getting a ton of value. Cast all your Spirits, including your Commander, at instant speed, and yeah, protect a Spirit when this comes into play as well. And speaking of powerful spirits, Supreme Phantom might just be a 1-3 flyer for 1 and a blue, but it also says other spirits you control get plus plus 1. So yeah, a spirit lord for just 2 mana that pumps your entire team, including all those tokens that you're going to be making when you know your spirits get through and deal combat damage, sign me up. Up next though, we've got Drog Skull Captain, a 2-2 flyer that says other spirit creatures you control get plus plus 1 and have hexproof. So this is yet another spirit lord that pumps all your other spirits and also protects them with hexproof too, which is is huge. And speaking of protecting your team, you've got plenty of spirit options actually that can help do that, and Selfless Spirit is a fantastic one. It's a 2-1 flyer, and again, I keep saying flyers, but all of these have flying. They're all evasive. They all can pretty much get through on many opponents, regardless for one in a white that says sacrifice it, creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn. So for just two mana, this is a fantastic evasive low to the ground flyer that also just protects your team for free. Oh, and again, when you sacrifice this, your commander replaces it by giving you a spirit token. And the last spirit I want to bring up, though, is Spell Queller, a 2-3 spirit with flash and flying that costs one white blue, and it does a lot for you. It says when it enters the battlefield, exile target spell with converted mana costs four or less. And when it leaves the battlefield, the exiled owner's card may cast the card without paying its mana cost. So this is a fantastic, kind of like a delay counter spell where it's like, okay, you don't get to cast that now, but if you ever deal with this, you get to cast it, which at that point, it might not be very relevant. So yeah, again, there are a ton of very useful and low the ground and evasive spirits out there. So Millicent has a lot to work with. And of course, you can actually get even more value out of actually hitting your opponents with things like Reconnaissance Mission and True Conviction. 
Reconnaissance mission says whenever a creature you control deals comedy to a player, you may draw a card. So, yeah, again, a lot of your spirits are going to be very evasive. Or, I mean, I should say evasive. I guess flying can get through on a lot of opponents generally. And, yeah, when you do that, you're going to be getting a ton of tokens. And you're going to be drawing a ton of cards. And then next turn, you're going to be getting through with even more creatures and drawing even more cards. And so on and so forth. And you can really make the most out of those attacks with something like True Conviction, which gives your creatures double strike. Well, and lifelink, but double strike's the important part here. So with that, again, when your non-token creatures hit your opponents, you're going to be triggering your commander twice, making twice as many spirits. And of course, in these colors, you got plenty of ways to protect your board, and you can also, you know, use a card like Face Reward to just basically get your board back. It says return to the battlefield all permanent cards in your graver that were put there from the battlefield this turn. So if someone actually wipes the board, you're going to be getting a ton of spirit creature tokens, because again, when your non-token spirits die, you get tokens, and then you just get everything back like nothing happened, except for the fact that you've got an even bigger board now. So yeah, Millicent has a lot to work with, and we haven't even seen the pre-con. But now it's time to talk about Strafan and go through the cards that might work well with this pre-con commander. And again, my sincere apologies if I'm mispronouncing that name. I am not trying to. I don't know if it's Strafan or Strafan or something completely different. My apologies. I'm just going with Strafan now, okay? Regardless, again, this commander can help you cheat out massive vampires. And again, there really actually aren't too many that are high in converting mana costs because, again, vampires generally tend to be more low to the ground. But there are a couple out there that are some really heavy hitters like Butcher of Malakir, Kazarov, Sangir Pureblood, and Kalidas, Blood Chief of Geth. Butcher of Malakir is an especially brutal card, basically a grave pact on a creature. It says whenever it and other creature you control dies, each opponent sacrifices a creature. And then Kazarov, Sangir Pureblood can get gigantic in absolutely no time. It says whenever a creature opponent controls is dealt damage, put a plus one counter on Kazarov, Sangir Pureblood. And of course, you can ping creatures with this. And speaking of taking out creatures, the Blood Chief of Get can definitely help us out with that too. By paying Black Black Black, we just tap this to destroy target creature. And on top of that, if that creature is put into a graver this way, you put a Black Vampire creature token onto the battlefield. Its power is equal to the creature's power and toughness equal to the toughness. So yeah, again, on the high end, there are some really big vampires that you can cheat into play with this commander. But you can also focus on some more low-to-the-ground vampires as well, like Florian, Malakir Blood Witch, and Vicious Conquistador. Florian says, At the beginning of your post-combat main phase, look at the top X cards of your library, where X the total amount of life your opponents lost this turn. Exile one of those cards, but the rest of the bottom of your library in a random order. You may play the exile card this turn. Basically, the more life your opponents lose, the further you dig to essentially tutor for a card. It's kind of like a mini-tutor in a way. And again, with a deck like this, you're going to want to make sure that you've got plenty of ways for each of your opponents to lose plenty of life each turn. And of course, Malakir Blood Witch is more than happy to help you with that. She has, when she enters the battlefield, each opponent loses life equal to the number of vampires you control. You gain life equal to life loss this way. So she's kind of like a vampire Gary in a way. And then of course, a very low to the ground creature like Vicious Conquistador can really help us out too. It has, when it attacks, each opponent loses one life. So this one mana creature essentially guarantees that we're going to be getting our commander's trigger to get all three blood tokens. But yeah, to me, there's kind of a push and pull with this kind of a deck. You want to make sure you've got those low-to-the-ground effects that can actually, you know, drain each of your opponents or deal damage to each of them so that you can essentially get the most blood tokens that you can. But you also kind of want, you know, those higher-end, bigger vampires to cheat and apply for some bigger effects. It's definitely a delicate balance, and actually, you don't even have to go in a vampire-centric direction. Now, I'm not saying don't include any vampires, but I am saying that you could more so focus on those blood tokens and just making a lot of them. So maybe you've got more effects in there, kind of like that vicious conquistador, like a spear spewer. It has tap, it deals one damage to each player. So yeah, again, another guarantee to get all those blood tokens. And maybe you've got some ways to take advantage of discarding cards with those blood tokens with something like a bone miser. It says whenever you discard a creature card, create a 2 2 black zombie creature token. Whenever you discard a land card, add black black. Whenever you discard a non creature, non land card, draw a card. So yeah, this can provide you a lot of value and can actually benefit you from discarding a card with those blood tokens. And of course, you can actually utilize those blood tokens to pretty much finish your opponents off with something like Married at Master. It has Fabricate 3, and whenever an artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, target opponent loses life equal to Married at Master's power. So again, although that attack trigger can be powerful for this commander, you aren't necessarily, you know, really required to build around it. Obviously, you can, you know, more so focus on those blood tokens if you really want to. Now, this is just my gut feeling at this point, but again, overall, I think between these two commanders, if I had to decide which I think is more powerful, I would definitely lead towards Millicent. Every piece of text on Millicent just works together in a fantastic way. 
The more spirits that you get into play, the easier it is to cast Millicent, and then you can, you know, swing with those spirits, make even more spirits, and even if they die, then you get more spirits, and then you can still easily cast Millicent to then, you know, restart. And like I demonstrated earlier, there are a ton of low to the ground spirits that are evasive and can help you out in a lot of situations. You know, again, there's ones that can pump and protect your team. There's ones that can stop your opponents from doing things. There's just a lot of good spirits out there. Now, obviously, there are also a lot of very powerful vampires out there as well. And yeah, a Strafan deck can be very powerful too. That being said, I don't think Strafan really works as cleanly as Millicent does. You do need those low to the ground components to actually get your opponents to lose life so you make more and more blood tokens. But then again, you're probably also going to want to have those higher end vampires that you know you can cheat and play with this. If you've only got one or the other, things are going to be a bit clunky. Whereas Millicent is like, hey, do you want to play a lot of low to the ground evasive spirits that do other things? Cool. Just do that and I'll do basically everything else for you. Well, and those spirits will too. Again, I could be very wrong on this and I know there's a lot of players out there that love vampires, but my gut says Millicent is gonna be the more powerful of the two. And again, I am not saying that the pre-con is gonna be more powerful because I have no idea what's gonna be in that. Regardless, that's just my opinion and your opinion very well might differ and that's okay. And actually, neither of us really know because you know, by the time those pre-cons come out, there's gonna be new cards in them and that could definitely sway things one way or the other. And with that, the show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again, and have a good one.